What's up, blockchain? This is Nick from Truth Blitz. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. And uh, I'm going to talk more today a little bit about uh, EOS and versus Ethereum and why I think EOS is going to be a superior platform. All right, so first off, the network is still clogged, although it has gotten better. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you in this video how to unclog uh, a pending or unstick a pending transaction if you have a transact a transaction that is stuck uh, on the blockchain because I had one that was stuck for almost two days I'm going to show you how to unstick it and send it back to your wallet manually all right but uh, first we're going to talk about why I feel uh, that EOS is going to be a superior product okay so ethereum can handle around 15 transactions per second. All right. As you know, Dan Larimer uh, is the head developer on EOS. He has also made Steemit. He has made BitShares. Um, Steemit can handle around a thousand transactions per second. Um, EOS had just tested their uh, WebAssembly. And it was found, and this is on their test net, they had just found that uh, they were able to get 50,000 transactions per second on WebAssembly. So, um, now there have been some people voicing concerns about security. Um, you know, yeah, speed's great, but speed's nothing if you don't have security. EOS is going to be as secure or more than Steemit. And that's just that's just the way it is. Um, I'm quite sure that Dan Larimer is not going to put out the project that he has always wanted to, the platform that he has always wanted to. This has been the platform that he has really wanted. Okay, he has two successful ones already, but um, EOS is the one that he had always envisioned. Okay, so he's not going to put out a platform that is going to be a a playground for hackers uh, and and you know something that's going to be very easy to manipulate and hack. You know, I just I don't see that happening. Um, again, I, I do see there's a valid point that we need to wait until it's on the main net uh, and up and running to know just how secure it is for sure but uh you know the thing is i i really don't see that there's going to be that much cause for concern when it comes to security on eos um now i understand that you know speed is secondary you know but the fact of the matter is, the way Ethereum sits right now, there is no possible way it is going to be able to handle a ton of ICOs, uh, you know, other platforms up and running like Populous, like Spectre, uh, people sending day-to-day -day transactions. It's just not going to work. If a, if a kitty game is going to basically render the Ethereum network useless, then how are all these platforms going to run on it um there would have to be a fork and things would have to be drastically changed in order for for that to work and that's just that's just the way it is but what i'm going to do the main thing i wanted to show you on this video I, you know this wasn't supposed to be a full rant about eos versus ethereum and by the way i do not hate ethereum Okay, so don't get me wrong. I love Ethereum. I think uh, Vitalik is a genius as well. Um, I think that Ethereum is a very successful platform. However, just like Cliff High said in the last three amigos, a platform is going to come out that's going to learn from Ethereum's mistakes and be better. And then a platform is going to come out that's going to learn from that platform's mistakes and be better than the previous one. And, you know, the next platform that is successful, that is going to be out, is going to be better than Ethereum. It's going to learn from the, the shortcomings and the downfalls of Ethereum. 
and use that to make sure it's better and I believe that's EOS um, and that's just my personal opinion but I'm telling you right now I'm very bullish on EOS I think the EOS price next year once the platform is out is going to skyrocket and I think that uh, Dan Larimer is going to prove himself a third time and that's just you know you can disagree with me all you want uh, these are my opinions this is the way I feel about it and I might even rub it in your face if you're gonna talk shit to me about it next year when things happen the way that I think they're going to um, you know the naysayers who who are basically telling me EOS sucks and uh, yada 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 um, I'm gonna come back and look at this date and say oh yeah remember when you said EOS sucked well look at it now and you know what feel free to do the same to me if I'm wrong I, I'm not thinking I'm above anybody um, I don't down talk anybody or talk shit about people unless you're a scumbag um, but it is what it is so basically what I want to do here is show you how to unstick a forever pending transaction on the ethereum network so what I've done is I have sent a transaction from my ether wallet that does not have a high enough um, gas price or gig away <laughs> um, to successfully make it to its destination so what we're going to do is we will go to now you're going to need to keep track of this number here the uh, nonce or nonce so just remember that that is a one so what we're going to do is go to send offline we're going to need to we're going to need to know the address that you sent it to and that you sent it from so send offline the from address okay this is the to address this is a test wallet that I'm using that I just made so the from address goes here the, from the wallet that you were sending from the to address the wallet that you're sending to the amount you're going to put zero gas price you need to make sure that it is what the standard gas price is so we will put 40 and that's in way so 10 zeros 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 uh, and then we said that was a one okay data we don't need anything next what we do is we put our private key from the wallet that we're using we hit unlock wallet decrypted generate transaction send transaction yes I'm sure okay so what this is gonna do is basically duplicate that transaction that is stuck but with a higher gas price because what happens is if you have a transaction that is way lower than the needed gas price it's just gonna keep trying to send every uh, few minutes gonna try to send in a new block so what that does is it will since it is a higher gas price you're using remember that that number that we used that one is key so what it's going to do is duplicate that transaction but bounce the old one back in hence why we used a zero uh, when we sent the, you know for the amount that we're sending um, that way we're not going to get anything else stuck and uh, honestly it doesn't even really have to be the standard gas price uh, it could be as long as it's higher than the gas price that you try to use on the transaction that is pending forever so that should unstick your transaction and bounce it back to your wallet I've had a lot of people asking me and myself I've had this happen to in the last couple days because of uh, crypto kitties um, my transaction has been pending for a long time is there anything I can do and uh, yes this is how you handle that situation so anyway guys I hope you found this video helpful I know the situation on the network has gotten a little better uh, since last night I noticed it was definitely better today it seems to be definitely better 
Um, so hopefully, you know, we're, we're past this for now, but this is going to happen again, okay? The amount of people pouring into the crypto space right now is, is insane. It really is. People that I used to talk to that I know about me being in a cryptos and Bitcoin, they looked at me like I had three heads and um, then they would change the subject. Now, because they're hearing about Bitcoin on the mainstream media and it's, you know, a household name now, now everybody wants in. So it's all that FOMO. So what happens? People get into Bitcoin, right? And then they venture off and they start getting into Ethereum and then they start buying other altcoins, right? So um, we are going to see a lot more traffic on the Ethereum blockchain. And this is going to happen again, okay? So just know for next time, if this happens, this is how you handle it. Um, also, like I said, this is why we need a platform that is scalable enough to where it can be used by all these companies that are building their platform on top of it. And right now as it sits, Ethereum is not going to work, okay? Um, I'm not saying things can't change in the future, but like I said, it would have to be a fork and uh, things would have to get totally changed uh, because the current protocol is not going to handle the amount of traffic that it needs to. Um, there's, I don't know how many more people are pouring into the crypto space every day, but it's a lot. All right. So just imagine uh, the amount of ICOs. You got a couple big ones running at one time, plus a stupid game, and then a bunch of other transactions. It's going to shut the network down. It's going to make it so you're stuck. This is why we need a platform that can handle all of that. And, uh, you know, maybe it won't be EOS. I think it will. Uh, Dan Larimer, like I said earlier, is a super smart guy. And he's already had two successful platforms. Steemit being the platform that handles the most transactions per day out of any other blockchain. Okay, so just food for thought. And EOS has tested way more, um, you know, successful transactions per second than Steam it. Way more. Like I said, 50,000. So, anyway, guys, um, enough of my rant. Like I said, I'm not an Ethereum hater, so don't get me wrong. But <clears throat> I just know what's coming, and I can see it. And um, I know what can and can't be you know currently the way things sit so anyway guys hope this video helped you and i'll see you in the next video